Hi judges of RoboCup 2021. We are a group wrecked from River Valley High School. I'm Edric. I'm Kang Tian. I'm Tianzi. I'm Ray Xu. Today we'll be doing a video presentation on our robot for the Rescue Line Intro League under 19. Specifically, we'll be walking through the robot body, hardware designing process, logic flow, programming process, as well as some problems we face during the whole preparation process. So firstly, the robot body and hardware design process. It is actually made with Lego parts since we were quite skilled at Lego building already. It was an easier choice for us so we could concentrate more on the programming side. There are actually not much ideas behind the overall design. It's, th it's simply the most compact design that we could think of to accommodate all our sensors, motors, parts and the main board. We actually redesigned and rebuilt the body multiple times to fit the competition's official parameters. And therefore, this is really the most compact design that we can think of. For the hardware side, we based it around the Arduino Mega Microcontroller as it has enough pins to accommodate all our parts. The use of an Arduino was actually to challenge ourselves in programming, as it is much harder and more rigorous than programming for LEGO. We hope to learn more from this process and push ourselves out of our comfort zones. But for realistic purposes, we thought that the Arduino would have a faster computing speed than the LEGO Mindstorm and hence might be better performance-wise. So for color sensing, we use the TCS 3200 sensors. For line tracking, we use the QTR 8RC reflectance sensor, an ultrasonic sensor for victims and blockades, and standard stepper motors for our wheels. Here we have a photo of our robot body, which has a handle installed purely for our transportational purposes. Next, onto the programming side. We wrote the program in C as it is compatible with Arduino and is most commonly used language for Arduino. At the same time, it has a fast compiling speed. Specifically, our code can be separated into three portions, line following, color sensing, and collection. For line following, we used a technique called proportional tracking. Basically, when line tracking, the reflectance sensor will sense how far the robot is from the line. Through our program, the distance away from the black line will be used to calculate a certain value that will make the robot turn more when it's further from the black line and turn less when it's closer to the black line. This makes it such that as the robot continues tracking, the line tracking becomes more consistent. So for color sensing now, it was actually a big hustle and took and time. Let's take a look at the flowchart. You can see that the bulk of the logic flowchart is taken up by the color sensing portions, which really shows how big of a problem it was. Technically, line tracking and color sensing are happening simultaneously, but for the sake of the flowchart, it is presented this way. There is a function return to get the raw values returned by the left color sensor first which is run through a calibration piece of code to configure the values into something that is better recognized. Then we raise the values to different powers and calculate the differences between these values and the supposed values of each color, which is pre-recorded by us and written into the code using a two-dimensional array. The color that returns the least value difference will be the color that the robot is sensing. Then we check what the robot should be doing using an if-else loop. If red is sensed, it signals that we are at the entry of the collection venue, and hence it will move forward. Unless, of course, it happens to be at the other side of the collection venue and moving towards the entry. After that, we check that we check that when it moves forward, it detects only white and not, for instance, black. If only white exists, it confirms that we are inside the venue and will commence sweeping. If else, turn backwards. If the color sensed is green, the right sensor will be triggered and starts sensing for the presence of a green grid on the right side to determine what the robot should be doing. In the event that two grids are sensed, the robot will move forward and check for a presence, the presence of a black line. This is to prevent 
this is to prevent the robot. This is to prevent the event that the green grids are actually on the other side of black line, and the robot is not supposed to care about green grids. Hence, if there is a black line, we turn around. If there is no green grid of the on the right, we check for a black line, and if there is one, we turn left. If Y is detected, trigger the right sensor as well to check for green. This is due to the possibility that there is one green grid on the right. Similarly, if a green grid is present, check for the black line ahead. If yes, turn right. If any of these situations prove to be false, code goes back to line tracking and ignores the color sense. As the other colors are mainly for exit and evacuation zone, they are not specifically written inside the color sensing code. However, when we enter the evacuation zone, we have no idea where we are. Therefore, we have to narrow down the possible orientation and location of the robot. First, we make a left turn to proceed to one of the four corners, reducing the number of places the robot can be to four. This also ensures that we know the robot's orientation based on the location. Next, the robot turns right and moves to the other side of the box. Measuring the distance traveled will inform us whether the robot is moving along the short side of the rectangle or the long side. If it is on the short side, it makes another right turn and moves forward to the other side of the box, measuring the distance traveled along the way. This will ensure that the robot is only in po two possible locations. Next, the sweeping motion begins. As the robot has a dimension of 15 cm by 15 cm, it will need to run along the side long side four times. After arriving at the other side of the evacuation zone, it moves 15 cm to the right to maximize the area covered and minimize the time required. It does so by making a right turn and moving for 15 cm, equivalent to a thousand steps of the motor. After the sweeping is done and running the whole area of evacuation zone, the robot aligns itself along the border of the zone by making a right turn and tracking along the border. When the robot senses blue, yellow, or green, it will turn left as we already know the orientation of the robot and exit the evacuation zone. Now, onto the problems we face during the whole preparation process. For building, other than the familiar Lego parts, we actually had to learn and try out soldering. It was a tough and problematic process, having to control the temperature and getting the wiring done properly. Now for programming, the color sensors were once again a big issue. They were extremely sensitive and actually the raw values were completely off from normal RGB values of these colors, hence the calibration took a huge amount of time. The number of nested loops and functions as well took a huge time to read and get correct in terms of order, and determining the correct values to use in certain events were a hassle as well. Initially, we are all pretty new to Arduino, with only a bit of knowledge about what it does and how to code it. Thus, we had to learn Arduino from scratch, which was not an easy task as we had to find out how to wire the Arduino components correctly and how to code with correct syntaxes. We also had to think about how to integrate Arduino and Lego together, which was not an easy task as the dimensions were difficult for Lego and Arduino. Finally, for the presentation, we only have 10 minutes here in the video and choosing what to present was a big problem. The slides you see here and the content was also elaborately chosen, so that it wouldn't take the spotlight off of us. That concludes our video presentation. Thank you, judges.